This is not a bandsaw. This is a prototype. This is a proof of concept. This is something I built to get dimensions, to make mistakes, to quickly fix them and easily fix them with wood before I make this out of steel. I eventually want to make this out of steel, but, but this is my prototype that I'm making out of wood. Just scrap wood I have lying around the shop uh, so I can make all the mistakes with this before I build the final version out of steel. Uh, I'll turn it on. It does run. I got to the point where it runs. It's kind of scary. There's a lot of things wrong with it, but it does run and track. It's a little bit frightening. It wobbles. Again, this was all just cobbled together. I built the initial frame in about a half an hour. And I just built it to get an idea of scale and size. And I said, okay, this is a good height. And does it fit under my heating ducts? Yes. And how big should it be? And where everything should be? And now when I build the final version out of steel later on, I can come back to this and say, okay, this is good. I want to make this arm a little bit longer. And where are the blade guides going to be? Um, some things I'm going to keep. I'll keep some of the tensioner parts. Everything else I'll, I'm going to make out of steel. The frame's going to be out of steel. I'll keep the wheels, and the wheels are the first thing I started with. Uh, when I wanted to build this, I'm like, oh, am I going to find some bike wheels, or where am I going to get the wheels? And somebody suggested, oh, if only you had a, an old wheelchair, and I did. I had it in the garage. I had it in there for a bunch of years, and my wife's like, you should throw that out. And finally, I'm like, I knew I'd find a use for it. These wheels are exactly 20 inches, and I wanted to build a 20-inch bandsaw, so it worked out perfectly. Uh, a lot of times online you'll see, like Matthias and a lot of the people who have built their own bandsaw, this shaft in the middle is a big one-inch steel shaft and a big bearing, you know, $60 in bearings or something. This is a half-inch steel shaft. I think it'll be okay. The bearings look really good. There's two per wheel. I figure if it can hold up, you know, a two, three hundred pound person, uh, that means it can hold at least 150 pounds each wheel. And from what I've looked into, the tension on the, the blade and the wheels shouldn't be more than 100 pounds, usually around 50 or 60 pounds, maybe 150, but I think I'm okay there. Now, like I said, this is all scrap wood. I didn't buy any of this wood. As you can see from this two by four, it is completely warped and bent. And all these boards are old scrap boards that I had laying around. And I actually think that's good. I had to shim this. I had to put a bunch of these shims in here to get it aligned and I figure if I can get this to work, if I can get this to track and the blade to stay on, it should be a lot easier when I actually build it out of steel and it's nice and straight and square. Again, the mock-up, the initial mock-up took me only like 30 minutes. I just screwed everything together. I had already drawn it on paper, but I wanted to actually see it. I didn't ex uh, plan on actually building it to actually work. I just wanted to get an idea of size and everything how high this should be, how long this should be, before I made it out of steel. Because if I welded it up and it's not right and I had to, you know, knock it back off and grind off welds, that'd be a lot of work. With this, if something's wrong, take off two screws, move something over, and it's done and it's fixed. If I don't like this, take it off, get another piece. When I make it out of steel, I want to know exactly what I'm cutting. I only want to cut stuff once and weld it once. Now you're saying, why should you make your own bandsaw? Um, I have a table saw. I have an old 10-inch uh, Craftsman table saw I've had for a decade. It's been great. I got it for 150 bucks on Craigslist. You can buy some other tools pretty cheaply, but if you go look on Craigslist for bandsaws, it's insane how much they cost. Something like this, a junky little 9-inch bandsaw, they, they want $100, $200 on Craigslist. Any 14-inch any bandsaw you see, four or $500. And forget about it. I was looking at a big Powermatic 20 and 26 inch bandsaw, two, three thousand dollars. So if you can make your own relatively cheaply, I'm planning on not spending more than a hundred dollars. Right now I've spent uh, 25 bucks on a blade. It's actually a meat cutting blade. It was the cheapest one on Amazon. And a couple of the reviews said, yeah, it's it's just as good as some of those grizzly $50 blades. So I think this was 15 bucks and eight dollars shipping or something. I needed to know what size blade to buy. So when I mocked this up, I kind of measured it with a rope and I figured, okay, it's a 138, 38 inch blade, 140 if I adjust it. So things like that I'm mocking up and I'm already answering questions before I make the final version. Um, and I'm going to make it out of steel for a couple reasons. One, obviously it's either steel or wood and like Matthias and a lot of people that have made it out of wood, 
it's a lot of work and it's a lot, it has to be right the first time. I figure I can make it a lot faster out of steel. If I buy a big three or four inch square steel tube to make this main frame, some of these bottom uh, cross members and weld that up with some struts, this thing should be super strong, relatively cheap. I'm gonna buy all the steel from the same scrap yard I bought the steel for these other tool stands, and that only cost me uh, 50 bucks for all this steel. I built seven of these tool stands recently, and I already love them. They're really heavy. They're heavy duty. The bottom is made from a car rim. I got seven car rims for 20, 30 bucks, and I got all the steel pipe and the steel plate for 50 bucks at a scrapyard. And so I bought seven of these stands for under 100 bucks, and I'm like, wow, that's pretty good. I think I should be able to get all the steel I need for this for under 100 bucks. Now it's going to be a little more expensive because it'll be, I think I'm going to buy three, three inch, two inch, and one inch square steel tubing, some angle iron, uh, some sheet metal to cover it. But the tool stands are what gave me the idea and the confidence that I think I can make it out of steel. And this tool right here, my little strip sander, is what also kind of encouraged me because. When I built this, I wasn't sure I could make it. I wasn't sure I could get the sandpaper to track on there. And I remember the first time I built it, and it wasn't even a frame yet. It was just a motor, and I had stuff clamped together, and I was adjusting it with my finger. And I was getting that sandpaper to track on there. And when I saw it on there, staying on there, I'm like, I can build this. It's actually working. And this is just a little sander. It's good for what it's used for. Um, but once I saw it working, I'm like, I can do it. And once I saw this blade on here tracking, I'm like, oh, I can build that. If it's working like this, I can build it out of steel and I can get it to work. Now it is going to require some welding like this did, a lot of welding, a lot of cutting with the oxyacetylene torch. Um, but building those out of steel gave me the confidence that I think I can build this out of steel too. Um, and now like I said, I put this together in about a half an hour, the very first version, and I've kept on modifying it, changing it, adding supports, things like that. But most of the time has been spent right up here with the blade tensioner and tracking. The first version was just a board. I actually have it right here. That was version one, just a board with the, the shaft for the upper pulley. Then I added two plates for tensioners just to get see how much it actually had to move. I then threw this out tried another version where I actually used the original hub off the wheelchair. I have all those parts still. And I thought this would actually, for tracking, I got rid of that. And the final version, which is mocked up out of wood, I'll make out of steel later, is much like all bandsaws where there's outer guides, an inner box that moves up and down, and inside of that, another mount that pitches back and forth for the, the blade tracking. And, on the top, I put a pulley, but originally it was just a threaded rod and a nut, but I made a little uh, wheel for the tr uh, tensioner up here, and there's a bolt on the back for tracking. And like I said, that took most, out of all the work here, that took about 80% of the time is getting that to work right, but I'm glad I did it. I made all the mistakes in wood, and now when I think I make it out of steel, it should go, go much easier. And again, let me turn it on. I'll have a... It's kind of frightening when it runs. I'll definitely have some guards when I build the final version. I'm not cutting anything without guards on it in case that blade comes off. And that is one concern is these wheels, because they're from old wheelchairs, they're really uh, convex. They're almost too convex. It should be basically flat with a little bit of convex shape on the wheel. These are really rounded over and the blade uh, kind of moves around a lot on there. So I'm going to kind of flatten them out and give it more surface area for that blade to run. So let me show you some of the details on here. Here's the uh, the nine inch pulley I have here. It's a nine inch diameter and the belt, the V belt just rides in there. And we have a three inch pulley on a motor. And again, this is not the final motor. I think I'm going to attach it the way uh, there was a metal bar that was attached. So these holes and brackets were already in there. So I might use this original plate. I might come up with something new. And again, here is the 
most complicated part of the build, which was this part right here. Again, these struts have moved, and I was quickly, I can quickly move them over up these supports. I can shim them, I can add stuff. So this is the thing that constantly was changing. So I have this, these outer rails right here, this inner frame right here that goes all the way up, and that's what lifts it off the upper wheel. And then inside is this piece, which is on a, a rod runs through here, and it rotates on this nut. So by tensioning that nut, that kicks the wheel for tracking. And you can see it tracks on that one and on the bottom one. 